Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to build a garbage management complex that is going to be efficient and effective and a water treatment complex that's going to take care of the sewage of the entire city. We are also going to work on the coastline of the Dima district using the keys, piers and bridges that have came out with one of the most recent content creator packs. Stick around to watch the building process and enjoy the video. I start off by removing the incinerator plants from their original location and put them right next to the industrial district on that dead end road at the north side and there's a reason for this that I'll explain uh, in a minute. I supply them with water and I build some power lines to connect the power with the rest of the city and then I move on to build our waste management layout. This is going to be a huge a waste and garbage disposal complex that's going to be built on the area on the outskirts of the farming district. The main road infrastructure, as you can see, was already built a couple of episodes ago, so we already have a nice foundation to work with. This area has a very easy access to the highway and also good access to the farming district, so this is going to be a perfect location for a waste disposal service that's going to service the entire region. Even though I plan on having other sites that are capable of managing trash for more uh, localized action, this is going to be the main one. I build a greedy layout, nothing special about it, and I start by placing some landfills. Six of them, to be more precise. Even though landfills are not the best assets to get rid of waste, because you'll have to manually empty them. They provide a bit of variety because they blend well with the rest of the waste management buildings. And there's also an achievement you get when you fill five of them at the same time, which I still do not have. I built a waste processing complex right on the edge of the layout that I'm going to keep turned off for the time being because the size of the city does not justify it just yet. I finished this off by providing a dedicated space for the recycling centers and then finish up the layout by upgrading the roads. Most of them are one-way roads to control the flux of the traffic. I then start building my sewage management complex. These are usually built right next to a river and I actually have the perfect location for it, right next to the waste management system. I then terraform the layout a little bit to set up the foundation and I then bring the avenue from the main infrastructure all the way to this area. Instead of building my water treatment plants right on the coastline, I build a canal for this purpose as I think it's going to make this area look much more advanced. Besides the water treatment plants, I also place some inland water treatment plants for the sake of variety. Similarly to the garbage complex, I only activate a couple of these assets because the current size of the city does not justify them to be all on at the same time but we can just turn them on as the city grows and we have the demand for them. I connect both the garbage complex and the sewage complex with power lines and also some pipes and make sure everything is set up before resuming the simulation and then I move on to build a dedicated area to um, water pumping. The hill right next to the avenue that provides access to the sewage complex is going to be a perfect location for this because it's close enough to the sewage treatment plants that makes it seem all um, part of the same unit but is also upstream and far away enough so that the pollution caused by the water treatment plants is not going to affect the water pumping system. I terraform the area right next to the river, I provide access with a dirt road, this is mostly decorative, and then I build my water pumping stations. I decided to build my incinerator plants right next to uh, the industrial district uh, for two reasons. The first one is that I had this existing road uh, finishing up at a dead end and I didn't know what to put here. And second, the old industry actually produces a lot of garbage. So I figured out that having its own waste management system would help things out. Here I'm just decorating the area a little bit by enclosing everything with fences and also planting a lot of trees on the outside to dissipate the pollution. As I said, I want to have a big waste management system. The one that we have built um, some minutes ago is going to be the main one for this entire region. 
but I also think it's important to have these little waste management facilities to provide localized action in some very specific areas, such as this one for example. This way the garbage trucks don't have to travel the entire map to collect the trash. Since I'm already planting trees, I also decorate the entire water system. Trees grow in much more abundance right next to water sources, such as rivers, which is what I'm doing here. I also put in some rocks and also some palm trees at the beach area. I then move to the district of Tadima, where we are going to decorate the entire coastline of this area. At the time of this recording, um, City Skylines has released two new content creator packs. One of them is the Bridges and Piers, which provides a lot of new options for building bridges, piers and also keys, which I'm going to use in this video. I demolish one of the bridges that we had and then I outline one of the margins of the river with the new set of keys that we've gotten with this new content creator pack. One of these keys has this huge and wide walkway that I think looks great. One of the features of these new assets is that people can actually walk on these keys, so I make sure to provide pathway access to them. I do the same thing on the other side of the river right next to our leisure district and here I use these keys that have incorporated staircases. This particular set of keys looks amazing in this area because the staircase clips directly into the sand which looks like it's providing access to the beach. We then rebuild the bridge that we have demolished and for this I'm using this uh, European a stone bridge that came with the content creator pack as well, just to see how it looks like. Finally, I move to our oil specialized industry and I start working on this coastline as well. This area was actually quite challenging to work on because the water level decreases as it goes downstream so it actually took me quite a few tries, but in the end it worked out alright. I also start setting up the foundation of the new public transport option of this region, which is going to be ferries. Because we have development on both margins of the river and also because we have a lot of jobs in the oil industry upstream, I'm thinking a dedicated ferry line connecting all of these areas together is going to be very popular and widely used by our citizens. I place my third and final ferry stop, at least for the time being, and I also place the ferry depot on this location as well. You will notice I'm not activating the uh, ferry system, I'm keeping all the assets turned off. I will only activate them on the next episode. In this video, I'm only focusing on the decoration of the coastline. I wrap up the entire thing by decorating the entire coastline with trees. This is going to be a leisure area where people can come and take walks along um, the riverside. So I'm going full ham with trees and I'm making this area as green as possible. I also built these new leisure assets which are the piers that come with the bridges and piers uh, content creator pack. These must be placed on the coastline area and stacked directly on top of the keys. So I use quite a few of them on the coastal area. Enjoy the rest of the tree planting transformation and I will meet you in a couple of seconds to show you the final product of this entire time lapse.
All right, fellas, I'm just done with construction for the time being. So let me show you in much more detail what I have done. Getting out of this camera and moving in to our water treatment facility complex. Uh, we can see that we only have three of these things working for the time being. This is more than enough to support the current state of the city, as you can see. As I've mentioned in the time lapse, as the city grows and develops and more demand for sewage increases, we can uh, simply turn these things on. And we even have room for at least um, a couple more inland water treatment plants on this side, and also a couple more um, outflow pipes or normal water treatment plants on this side of the canal as well. I think I will also want to wait in the future to unlock the advanced and ecological facilities, so I'm talking about the eco water treatment plant to replace the normal ones and also the eco advanced inland water treatment plant to replace these ones over here in this little island. So yeah, overall I think this um, facility complex or at least this location is going to be enough to support the entire city. We'll just have to work on it as the city develops. Moving on to our water pumping um, service state. Oh, and by the way, let me just give you a closer look of uh, the landscape. I really liked how this area has turned out. Uh, I just think it's a pity that it is not a touristic area. This could be a turn into a touristic beach or something like that. But um, there will be other areas in the city where we can achieve this. But uh, moving in and to our water pumping um, section. We have these water pumps. Similarly to the water treatment facilities, only two of them are enabled. These are the ones um, that are currently working right now. We don't have the demand for more. And we can just turn them on as time goes by and we need more water pumping. As I've mentioned, I have built this dirt road to provide uh, access to these facilities. It's not really necessary, it's only for decoration. Um, these things work very well without having uh, roads. They don't need to be placed alongside road. But uh, I wanted to create this um, access road just for aesthetic purposes. Now we can go on to our um, garbage and waste complex. We have these six landfills currently uh, working as well as two um, recycling centers. Uh, this facility here is a curious one, this is a waste processing complex. So the way this works is um, you actually have to place uh, these things over here, the waste transfer facilities. Uh, when we place them, these will spawn some trucks that will go around the city and collect the trash. And then this building over here, the waste processing complex, will get the trash from these waste transfer facilities and bring them here where they are processed. So this is a much more advanced solution to um, waste management. We definitely do not have the demand for it right now. I don't, I'm not even sure if we are ever going to use this. Um, if we do, we have already placed here. We just have to activate it and build the other complementary units. If we find out that we don't have any other use for this, we can just demolish this and uh, build something else in its place. Speaking about uh, building something else, uh, this area is also very suitable for other service buildings such as, for example, uh, the road maintenance building and also the bus depots, which are essential buildings that you will eventually need to place but are not required to be um, next to your um, civilization. So we actually have quite a lot of room here to do that as well. And we can also place um, the unique factories that we uh, will eventually unlock throughout the course of this gameplay. Another thing that I want to show you is actually the um, road directions that I'm using here. So I'm just enabling the arrow so you can take a closer look of how traffic is supposed to flow here. So we have a total of three exits that trucks can take to get out of the complex. So we have this road over here this one and also this one and then we have uh, three entrances that trucks can get to get into the complex and uh, bring the trash to the landfills and also the recycling centers which are this one 
this one and also uh, this one. I'm pretty confident this is going to be more than enough to handle traffic around here when we have all the recycling centers turned on. At the moment, as you can see, we have absolutely no problem whatsoever, but we'll just have to wait and see how it behaves in the future. Moving on to the central part of the city and getting into the district of Tadima, we can see that I have completely cleared out the polluting buildings that we had here, so all the um, recycling centers and also the water treatment plants have been removed. And let's see if this area is completely cleared. Yes, there we go, it's uh, completely free of pollution and we can soon start developing this area and turn it into a nice residential neighborhood. Perhaps we can do that um, over the course of the next couple of episodes. But one of the things that I wanna show you here is actually the um, final result of what we have done with the coastline. So we have built this huge walkway um, across the river that came out with the new, the most recent content creator pack. And as you can see, we can already see uh, people using it. Um, it looks uh, amazing. I think it's a very nice addition to the game and um, uh, it definitely allows for the creation of these um, coastal areas that was definitely missing in the vanilla gameplay. One of the things that I don't like, however, is that um, when you clip a ferry station directly on top of one of these keys, people can actually go through it. So this is a walkable path and people actually clip through it when they are traveling from one place uh, to the other. So something that is not that pleasant, but um, I'm willing to live with it because placing the ferry stations right next to the key uh, looks um, very very fitting. I really like how it connects and uh, everything seems to be clipping just perfectly. Well, except for the people who go through uh, the building itself. But anyway, here we can take a closer look at the bridge that we have rebuilt. So as I've said, I am using this European style bridge that came with the content creator pack. This was the only four lane bridge that came out with the pack. All the other ones are uh, smaller bridges or uh, six lane bridges or even highway bridges. So this was um, the only option that I actually had. And it's mostly characterized by having these uh, stone pillars which could be very fitting if you are trying to do, for example, an European style city. I have only upgraded one of these bridges and I left the other bridge as uh, a natural one, the one that came with the um, standard game. This can be one of those hypothetical situations where on one side we have uh, this old uh, bridge and then as time goes by and the city developed, a more recent and modern bridge was created uh, right next to it. I'm gonna keep it as it is for the time being. Moving on to the other margin of the river, to um, West Tadima. This is actually what I was telling you about. This specific key clips um, right in the sand and it looks like the stairs are giving access to the beach that is underneath. And I really like the effect of this even though people cannot really use the bottom part. Actually, they can because if we look into this panel, we can see that there are two versions of this key. One of them has an arrow on top, which means that people can walk um, right on top of it. And then this one over here has a arrow on top and an arrow on the bottom. So I believe it means that people can actually walk on the low tier of the key itself as well. Um, for this key I'm only I'm using this one because um, I don't want people to walk over here because they would uh, walk underneath the sand and would create a bit of clipping issues. So I'm just gonna let people uh, travel on the top side of the key and the bottom part is where people would go to the beach hypothetically. Unfortunately we are not going to be able to see that um, in this gameplay. West Tadima has its own ferry station and I've also placed this little pier over here to provide a little bit of leisure and similarly to what we have done on the other margin I have decorated the entire thing with trees that goes alongside all the coast area 
up until here where I have placed yet another pier right next to uh, the entrance of the um, nature reserve park. I still don't know how I'm going to decorate this area over here, it's currently very empty, but uh, we'll see it as time goes by. This area of the coast has remained pretty much untouched, and that's because I want to preserve these volleyball courts, which must be placed uh, directly next to a road. So I cannot place them uh, next to a key, for example. But perhaps I can find a solution for this and continue this key all the way to this junction here and find a way to make everything blend much better. I'll just have to uh, think about it. For the ferry network, that is going to be one of the key sources of transportation around this area. I'm thinking we can have a singular line that goes upstream and will provide access to um, every single place along the way. So for example, we can have an additional ferry station over here in this island. Uh, this is where it can the line can start. And it will eventually go upstream, connect to this part of a West Adima, then moving on we can connect to this particular station, then we can go upstream and connect to our oil specialized industry and uh, a bit more uh, upstream we can eventually connect to one of the main residential areas that we are going to have um, in this part of the map. And we can even keep going, we can even bring the line to the north side of the map, go under this rail bridge and provide access to this region as well and also to the area right next to the ocean for example. So we can convert this into a very complete um, option for transportation that provides access to mostly the entire region. But anyway guys that's going to be it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope to see you again for the next one. Thank you for watching, take care and as always have fun.